This is an interesting thing. It's a ceiling leg that screws into a standard Edison screw lamp holder, but also as a fan. And you can choose, well, theoretically, according to the instructions, you can choose the light, the fan, or uh, both at once. But I've not had that. I've had, well, I'll show you. I shall screw it in. Here is the hoppy. I shall aim this away from the uh, microphone when I'm screwing this in. So initially... When you power it up, it's just the light, and that comes in at 25 watts, quite bright. Uh, in position, in a room, it actually looks very much like one of those uh, round circular fluorescent lamps. You can actually feel a sort of radiant warmth from the illumination. If I unscrew it, though, and then power it up again, the fan starts. And it's fairly powerful, I have to say. I've tried this, and uh, it certainly put out a good airflow. Uh, theoretically then, you unscrew it and turn it on again, nope, uh, it doesn't do at any point just the fan on its own. So what was it with the uh, uh, fan running? 29 watts. And without the fan? Uh, 27 watts it's at now, so uh, actually 25 it's dropped to, so about say 4 watts the fan right here. Sorry if that, that was off shot quite a lot, just because of the amount of airflow and also because of the size. This thing is fairly big. What, what size is it? Let me grab a ruler. Uh, I'll give you in inches and millimetres. Uh, so it's roughly 10 inches across, uh, which equates to approximately uh, 250 mil. This thing has two mounting options. This bit, bane it caps off quite forcefully, quite hard to get on. And you do have the option of undoing this connector and uh, using this on the ceiling, connecting your main supply into it. I don't know if it leaves an awful lot of room in here. You might have to actually have the connection in the ceiling itself, which isn't ideal. Uh, but then you can just plug a feed directly into this so this thing can mount hard up against the ceiling if you wish, which is quite nice. Let's get that out. Let's get these out of the way completely and bring in a screwdriver and pop it open. We'll take a look at the circuitry. I shall pop that out of the way there. So three screws. Hopefully this isn't going to be clipped on in some way. We'll find out when I take it out. Kind of intrigued to see what the circuitry is. I wonder if it's a... I would guess, given it that power, it is a constant current supply for the... LEDs, have they got a separate supply for the for the fan? Can we get the circuit board out here? Is that got a screw? Before I pull this too hard, it does feel like it's just adhesive. It just feels like it's adhesive. Okay, what do we have here? I tell you what, I shall take a picture of this and we can reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I have to say that was super frustrating, mainly because of this chip here, which is the power supply for the fan, and it deviates from the data sheet. Not that I could find much of a data sheet anyway, but when I found the closest I could get to a data sheet, it doesn't, it's got something wrong. I don't know who's, if it was the person who designed this or the uh, manufacturers got an error in the data sheet, but they, they're doing something odd and it made it just that little bit harder to reverse engineer. The fan motor is a typical uh, brushless DC motor, but there's very little on it. You've got one, two, three connections here, and then you've got the little four-pin chip that just sequences the windings, and it's got the built-in Hall effect sensor. There's virtually nothing on this, just the windings and that little chip, which doubles up as the sensor. Very neat. Uh, the LEDs, let me show you the LEDs. Once you've finally unclipped the cover, which is very hard to remove, uh, partly because it's glued as well as clipped and like, how many clipping positions are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clipping positions, which made it very hard to remove. But there are three sections of LEDs wired in series inside, and each one has double chip LEDs, plus they've got two in parallel, times one, two, three, four, five, six, so 18 pairs in parallel, all wired in series and each with two chips in series, if that if that makes sense. I may 
Hack this down to lower power with that resistor there, but there is a there is a caveat to that. Now let's see if you can find the fault. If I zoom down this uh, a little bit, and we look at the back of this circuit board, see if you can find the fault. I'll give you a clue. It's a thin track because it's the control line that actually turns the lights off. Can you see it? It's there. The fault is that during manufacture, uh, there's a bit of track missing. Unless they've scrubbed it off the drawing because it malfunctions, it blows up. I'm not really sure. Maybe I'm about to find out because I've just bridged that with a bit of wire. Uh, we can explore that together when I turn the power back on again. Um, other than that, let's go to the main picture here. And then I shall show you the schematic as the modular sections. Now, there is a very interesting chip in this. See this little chip here, little SOT23-6, but well, it's actually SOT23, but it's got the five pins. That is, it's made by Bright Power. It doesn't say BP. It says uh, S4523B, I think that is, or S. I'll show you the data sheet anyway. It's very clever. That is a very clever chip. It's only got a 10K resistor there, um, connected straight to the power, and it switches to loads. When you toggle the light switch on and off, this switch is actually enabling uh, this power supply and the uh, the lamp driver. Um, the lamp driver has two resistors in parallel, as they often do. It's got a little surface mount underneath, uh, 1.8 ohm, and then this top resistor, 1.5 ohm. This is just something they do a lot. And there's a little fusible resistor there with the weirdest colour coding ever. Um, right, let's go straight to the schematics. And I'll just show you as manufacturer's data sheets. Let's tame this down just a little tiny bit. That'll do. Probably way too dim, but not to worry. Um, this is the fancy chip, the one that has impressed me. The little bright power chip. Um, is there a number on this? No, there's not a number on this. Oh, well. But it's the five pin chip and it's got the negative connection, goes to the zero volt rail. And we get one common incoming supply. Now, it's worth mentioning there is a slight deviation here. They've swapped live and neutral. The neutral is the one that's actually... The live is the fuse in it and the neutral is actually the one going with the 10k resistor to that. But it takes the full wave rectified supply in the case of the uk that's about 330 ish volts and that goes straight to the chip and it's got the negative there positive there and it references on the primary side of the um the unsmooth side of the bridge rectifier it has a 10k resistor and it senses the uh, ac and it knows when the ac is turned off and back on again clever little chip and then toggles one two or both uh that is it. A uh, clever, clever chip. Uh, there's the odd fusible resistor, which the colour code is brown, black, gold, gold, black. I've never seen a colour code like that before. Brown, black, gold, gold is not a standard four band colour code. Um, I'm guessing really brown, black, gold is what we're looking at here. One zero and then a divider to make it one ohm. Anyway. What else is there? The super duper 15 microfarad, it's a big one. Uh, death beam capacitor. That's going to cook all the wee babies. The death beam capacitor, I should mention, it's a conspiracist who claimed that the 400 volt capacitors and the LED drivers and streetlights were to power the 5G death beams. Very peculiar. Ignore the bridge rectifier and capacitor because they're actually on the other part. This is the LED driver. It's a bright power BP2867F. The pin marked NC, no connection. I guess that's a variation of the F. That's the one that's actually got the broken track. Uh, a bit worrying it says no connection, but uh, I guess that's an enable pin. Uh, we'll find out when I turn it on again. There's the inductor that limits the current. There is the capacitor across the LEDs and the uh, shunt resistor just to provide a slight load. And uh, it does the, the usual thing that it pulses the current through the inductor. Uh, the inductor limits the current and then when it turns off the collapsing inductor field induces uh, a current spike in the opposite direction which goes via this diode, this freewheel diode and just uh, tops the capacitor up so it's an efficient way of dropping it. Very low uh, pin count. There's the two resistors down here for the current sensing which sets the output current to the LEDs and there's a 30k resistor which is going to be the problem. That's the resistor over voltage protect 
by setting that resistor, it sets the maximum voltage it will measure across the output. And the reason it does that is that in this case, I really it's to protect against if the LEDs go open circuit will limit the amount of arcing that goes on, but also it protects this 250 volt capacitor from being over voltage because if a uh, it didn't cut the voltage down with this resistor, uh, programming a voltage threshold, it could actually cause that capacitor to pop when the LEDs failed. Uh, that is it. I am going to cut that uh, 1.5 ohm resistor off afterwards because now comes just absolute hell. The bit that took me so long because uh, it's completely upside down and backward, bits missing. The KP219, what is this? KP219, is it zero? Yep, KP2190SG. Uh, Kiwi, I found Kiwi Instruments. The data sheet is ultra vague. It's in Chinese, even by, by Chinese standards, it's vague. It's just a really badly documented chip. But anyway, the snubber network across the transformer, because it is a sort of theoretically isolated-ish supply, is uh, missing. There is a feedback winding that's used with a very high value resistor purely to sense the voltage on the other side. Quite interesting. Um, the diff change I've made here is that on the data sheet it shows the current sense connected directly to negative. In reality, the ground is connected directly to negative. Uh, and then the current sense, all the other components that are showing reference to ground are actually connected to the current sense after that 2.7 ohm resistor. That was very bamboozling. But the, basically speaking, the inductor here, provide the feedback winding, uh, provides a feedback voltage that it goes through this divider and then goes to the feedback winding. The choice of those resistors sets the voltage that appears on the other side. Um, there's a little capacitor for its own supply, which is oddly referenced to current sense and not ground. Um, it's a strange, I get the feeling that might be a mistake or it might be a data sheet mistake. Uh, there's a one mega ohm resistor going to this OB. I haven't a clue. It doesn't even mention the data sheet. It shows OB with a resistor to it. Output enable, goodness knows, but that is being pulled to zero volts to uh, enable this uh, so that resistor would theoretically keep it turned off, maybe. Mm, very strange. Uh, right. So I'm going to reassemble this now, and then before I turn the power on, I'll start the camera again so we can marvel and see if it works or it goes bang. One moment, please. And we're back, and it is time to see if it's going to explode. Let's lift the circuit board off the uh, fan blades, because that would be quite dramatic. This isn't on, so I'll just, I'll just gingerly stuff that over there. This isn't really fitting anywhere, is it? It's not really happening. Um, yeah, this is, this is a bit tight, if you ask me. Right. Is it going to bang? Light on. Fan on, but light off. Light and fan on. It works. Right. Uh, so now, what was the power with just the light on? 25 watts, it says. Sideways. Now that that's our power's off, um, let's lop that resistor out there and see if it just stops the light working completely. It may do. It often does. Ready? Oh, it's lit at lower power. It's down to 10.9 watts now. And it's still got its... And functionality. Excellent. Well, that's a good result. Um, so, quite interesting circuitry. That little chip alone was by far the most exciting bit in this. The fact that uh, it can switch between those two things. I'm not sure what current it's rated at. I should take a look at that data sheet again. Uh, especially surprising is a bright, bright power chip. And then again, look, at they, they do nothing but this sort of LED lighting. But that, uh, that concludes the video. God, it took so long to make that video. It took ages to make that video because of all that complex reverse engineering, uh, particularly with the errors and how it was just skewing the values and finding the data sheets in the first place. But, but having said that, well worthwhile. Uh, interest. I like the fan. I like the fan. It makes me realise the fan is powerful. It's probably cheaper. 
Instead of using a big desk fan with a big heavy motor, to just use these little uh, brushless DC motors and a little switch mode power supply that's probably going to make it cheaper to make these. Plus you could also have the optional sort of pulse modulation settings, you could give it complete uh, variable speed control. Uh, but there we go, it's working. It's the fan light that does actually work completely now that has been repaired with that weird anomaly on the circuit board. Job done.